Oh. There we go. Hello. Howdy. Uh, sorry about being a little late. Had to get the car. They uh, fixed the uh, ignition coils and found out that it was leaking oil extremely bad, far worse than what I thought it was. Oh, so that's not good. Had that all fixed, but then they told me it, it was going to be about three o'clock, and I was like, okay, that's cool. And then they called me at 4 30 and said car's ready and i'm like uh not so cool but i need the car <laughs> so i ended up running a little late but mark's looking a little dark today yeah Let's see if anybody <clears throat> Anybody else gets in here? See if art comes or whatever. Uh, just installed the software on this computer and it is different. Let's see. For some reason, my head's cut, cut off. I don't know what's happening. I hate when that happens. I can see here, but can't get audio or video to work. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> when I when I first started this, it asked me to join with uh, computer audio or whatever, and nothing was working until I clicked computer audio. Um, so I don't I don't know if that's what's going on with you or not, Mark. <laughs> The bottom of the screen, on on the left, they have the audio and video options. There we go. Wait a second. Maybe that's better. Is that better? Right. My head's... Better than what? <laughs> well, my head was cut off. It cut my head off. Oh. You could okay. just see my torso. Okay. I can see you fine. Let me do a little adjustment here. Yeah, I, I just clicked on some stuff. So I just installed this, uh, this version yesterday. And none of my settings are being saved. Oh, okay. It's very odd. But Mark's here, but Mark is having, Mark is having problems. I, I, I don't know, Mark. I'm using the uh, the client. Uh, Jim, Jim, you use the the uh, the web version, don't you? You've got any ideas about the picture? About why he can't be seen or heard? Or I don't know. Yeah, it, I I use a Windows version, and if you move your cursor around. On the screen, the bottom left, you have the microphone and a video. Yeah, it so does. Stop, it stop doesn't it. look like he's muted. It it looks like there's something else going on. Yeah, they, they that's exactly the same as it works in uh, Linux. Uh, there, Jim. So um, when I come on, my video is always crossed out, and my uh, audio is um, working fine, so uh, you know. Well, like like I said, when I first started this this went up, it asked me if I wanted to use the computer audio or if I wanted to use, uh, I guess call in, make a make a phone call for the audio. Yeah, and nothing was working until I clicked computer audio. 
So that was my guess, but I don't know how to tell him how to set that. Well, in my case, it always tells you it's being recorded and you have to okay that before you, you get connected. And it's just a single button click and that's done. Right. Um, uh, you know, the other, the other thing, if you're in the browser, um, if you click on the, are you using Chrome or are you using, uh, any, anyway, there should be permissions for, for access to the web camera and the, uh, audio device and your permissions may not be set right for that website. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. I, <clears throat> yep, I do. I uh, upgraded my Zoom uh, client here maybe a week and a half ago. I missed last week because I forgot what time zone I was in. But, <laughs> you know, I thought he forgot where he was at. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. When you uh, travel enough, you wake up in the morning and you think, where in the heck am I? <laughs> yeah. And uh, places start looking the same no matter where you're at, don't they? Well, unfortunately, they don't. The layout on my office here is very different than my office in Milford. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's like I go out of my office and take a right turn and run into a wall basically. So, yeah. So at any rate, but I can hear you fine. Um, I assume you're hearing me. Um, yeah. Everything seems to be working except like I said, zoom did not remember any of my settings from, from last night. So I don't know what's up with zoom. Zoom is, you say from last night i i we we haven't had a live meeting since i reloaded the os or a virtual meeting since i reloaded the os so i put uh zoom on this machine last night and me and uh me and steve talked for for a little while so all the settings should have migrated and stayed and all that fun, happy stuff. And they didn't, I had to log back in and everything. So, so um, I didn't realize we were supposed to be virtual this week. I thought last week was virtual and this week was supposed to be live. We are obviously. Uh, I, we are virtual this week. We're virtual next week too, aren't we, Jim? No, we're real for February second and February 9th. Okay. By the way, did some somebody send out an announcement for this meeting? Yeah. Sent it out this morning. Hmm. Uh, for some reason or other, it didn't appear on this computer, but um, you know, maybe I've got something screwed up uh, here. Do you are you sending to the Gmail account, you know, Jim, offhand or not? I haven't touched it in six months, but let's see where it's going. I thought you were sending it to arthur.lc at gmail.com or something like that. Well, let me go look, see where it's going. Mark is using MS Edge. He thinks he has some security settings shut down. Oh, that, that okay. may be what's wrong. I, I don't, I really don't know. You might try to just install the, the Zoom client. Yeah, that'd be the other thing to do. See if that doesn't help. So today is the 26th. We're virtual. Yep. I'm looking at the schedule. We, okay. we actually have a schedule. Okay. Jim Jim made a handy dandy schedule. 
Oh boy. Oh. So it's at 11 a.m. It looks like it went to arthur.lc at gmail. Arthur.lc at gmail. Okay. I will take a look. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's going to the Gmail account, not to the K Lab resources account. Okay. That's what it looks like. Let me take a look at it real quick. <clears throat> yeah your own blci distribution list yeah okay and the email is yeah the gmail yep okay well i'll poke around it may have i've had some strange effects with uh this gmail account since i've gotten back to california so <laughs> i don't know I think it has to do with the configuration on the two different uh, desktop computers I'm using. At any rate, so I had a little excitement right before the meeting. I was trying to gin up some lunch for myself so I wouldn't be stomach growling, et cetera. Oh, there's Mark. Maybe. Maybe there's Mark. Mark may have to shut down the browser now. Okay. <laughs> At any rate, so um, I made some popcorn in a corning dish. I set it down on the counter and I took the glass lid on the corning dish off and laid that on the counter and walked over to the other side of the kitchen and the corning glass lid exploded into a zillion pieces fortunately i was i wasn't standing immediately in front of it or i wouldn't be here talking to you guys right now <laughs> i'd probably be in the back of an ambulance uh, heading for uh, the local hospital hmm. now those are those are temper tempered um Boros, I'm sorry. Should be. Yeah, those are tempered borosilicate glass, and they should be relatively bulletproof. But this one certainly wasn't. This one's probably, I don't know, thirty or forty years old. We've had these corningware things for a long, long time. We should be so young. Huh. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> I just sent you another email. A test. To, let's see. Let me go take a look here. Hmm. And you sent that to the Gmail account also? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, that appears not to be working right now. Because I haven't gotten anything on this computer from in that Gmail account since the 16th of November. So obviously that's not working. So. All right, that's something I'll have to work on after uh, the meeting. <laughs> Actually, it hasn't received anything on that uh, email account since the day before we left for a while. <laughs>
Um, I don't know. I've been uh, I've been cleaning out the uh, the closet. So next week, I may have some goodies to give away. I have a robot that I was going to send to you, but I didn't get to it before I left Ohio. So but we'll have to wait until we return in the spring. Okay. So meetings uh, will be the second and the ninth for February and March. Those are the in-person meetings? Yes. Okay. So the first two Thursdays in February and March, so next Thursday will be the first meeting. And then seven days after that will be the second meeting and the same two days in March. Okay. In the ninth. Well, it's a 28 day February, so they should translate straight across. Yeah, Westchester has the end of February is booked up though, right? With with other people? Yes. Yeah. At one point there was some discussion of going to one of the other libraries. Did that just not pan out or what? Uh, we're, we're, it kind of looks like the library system is going to two meetings per person. I think that's their intent per month. Okay. So, so basically we're not eligible for another two meetings uh, per month. Yeah, yeah, the lady that I was dealing with suggested we might try a second person to schedule the other two meetings, but I was a little, I wasn't, didn't feel comfortable with that's really what, what their intent was. Yeah. So I, yeah. Well, that, that also means that two people actually have to coordinate with each other to, to do something. But yeah, about the same time, because I was looking at that system and it looked like a lot of it had already been booked up and it doesn't tell you who booked it up. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, I think I think everybody's I think we're all just relearning from 2020. We're still getting used to the life pre 2020 or post 2020 or. One of the two. <laughs> one of the two. One of, the, one of those. Yeah, so we we're open for discussion. We talked about meeting in uh, Monroe, and they were amenable to us doing that uh, and using a secondary, a second person to do that if we wanted to do that. And you know, did we want to try to drag everyone up to Monroe uh, two nights a month was a question. And the other question was, is that their intent so that we can have four meetings a month? Yeah. I don't know, with, with several of the members, the active members living closer to Westchester, going to Monroe may not be the greatest thing. I don't know. Well, yeah. anytime there's a choice, I, my concern is always <clears throat> somebody ending up at the wrong place on the wrong week. Yeah, yeah we, we can't handle the same place, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we'll, we'll keep thinking about it and keep 
getting feedback and right okay. now um i'm trying to shoot for the first two thursdays of each month and we're good okay. for february and march and uh we'll go from there and in the back of our mind back of my mind eventually thinking about tuesday night because i think tuesdays are are not that crowded we'll keep an eye on it eventually hey Vicente. hi how you doing great oh we got a we got a, a news message for Vicente. yeah what? Uh, what is the arduino micro python ide it looks like arduino is is offering a MicroPython IDE. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's in the news this week. Interesting. I was working <clears throat> in MicroPython this week. Oh, OK. Yeah. But I'm trying to, to use a transparent uh, serial connector using radio a uh, radio link uh -huh. so the idea is to program the robot in micropython but uh, without cables you know and you can okay. change the, you can change the code and and see how it performs instantly because micropython is really is interpreted so you don't you don't need to compile and flash the microcontroller. You just play, uh, press run and and the, the program is running. So you can modify and just experiment quickly instead of flashing the, the microcontroller and try again. So I want to do that with wireless. To, to see the robot in the track and in the computer change parameters and see how it performs moving around. So I have my, my serial bridge working at 115,200 baus. Is the, the speed of the or the IDE of MicroPython, the one I am using. So, how's it going? Leroy, you have something to show? I, I don't really have anything tonight. I, uh, I did work, I did some work on the, uh, on the robot and, uh, I don't know what I did, but it completely stopped working. It just, it went yeah. wacky. So I reverted the code back to the code that I showed off last week and uh, trying to figure out what I actually did to make it break. Because okay. I, I broke, I broke it bad. Like, you know how it was actually going straight and getting to where it needed to go and stopping and doing everything i added i added some uh checks in there so that it would check for new uh for new markers and everything and try to recenter it itself oh mark you are echoing <laughs> um but you know i tried to get it to to center itself up and as soon as I tried to get it to center itself up, it just decided that it was going to move about half a half an inch, not even enough to to see the next marker. And I'm like, why? Why did it break? So start over. So you look. It looks like there's two of you, Mark. Okay, now you probably can unmute yourself and see if you if we're echoing. 
They okay. try to speak. And, and say something. Say something. <laughs> say Can you hear me? Yeah. We okay. got you. We got you. Yeah, it was a Windows setting or two. I, I don't know where they were. But yeah, thanks. I've been listening to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Finally, I, I was using this. This is the McQueen Plus robot. Yeah, Everybody cool. knows, knows, knows it. Uh, I am using an ESP32 board that is a, yeah. re a replacement for the microbit. BBC microbit board, but you, yeah. this board uses the ESP32 and is compatible with the with the robot. So I put MicroPython in this board to program the robot using Python, and this robot already has analog analog sensors. I I I R I R mm -hmm. sensors but they can be used in analog mode or in binary mode. Okay. So I, I am using these two sensors of the middle. In analog mode, I just add the value of both and divide by two to have the average. So I, I, I am having the, the gray value of the, the point around them. And I, will, I, I try to, to use the same track for the uh, the other robot I showed two weeks ago, so let, let me show you how it works. Uh, okay, I I am playing with the neo pixels also of the of the board. Let me show you how it, it works in the in the track. Can you see? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is uh, another robot using MicroPython, okay? But the, the, the same algorithm to check the value of the, of the gray scale and decide if go to the right or left depending on the, on the position in the, in the gray track, okay? It, it doesn't look like it's quite as fast as the other one. No, you can change the speed. The, uh, the speed is from, from one, one for, from zero to two, 255 mm. and the speed now is 40. Okay. So you can go really fast, but I, 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 don't, love, I, I don't like to increase the speed because it, it, it moves too, too wobbly, too, too bad. And this is the, the, the cute boat with the same board. This is the one I was using. It's, it's a little smaller. But I, I, I add the infrared control to this one. L let me look for, for the infrared control. It's somewhere here. Okay. Let's stop this one. And this, this, um, okay. Now, uh, now this can be controlled using the infrared uh, control. You see? Mm -hmm. Okay, stop, play, stop. <laughs> I, I, I made a, a menu using the bars. I don't, uh, you can choose which bar you want to adjust. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the bar from the bottom is the position of the, of the robot in the track to the right or to the left. Let me change uh, <coughs> this position and start again and look how oh. it goes. He goes for the border out, outside, you see? Nice. I, I can change it on, on the fly. Let's see when, when it comes. I will increase the, the position. You see, go to, nice. the, to the center. Yeah. 
okay a little bit more full full this okay you the, uh... the upper uh, men menu is the speed of each model so i can change the speed of the model but it it, it, it goes complete, completely crazy if i change the the speed let me see uh, Download the speed. Oh yeah. But I need to change the speed of the of the also of the the other model there. And now go, going slower. Let me put it in, in the in the middle of the track. Okay, so this is it. Nice. Stop. And that's it. You've, you've made a lot of progress with that. Yeah. Well, as I was planning to show this uh, last week in the, in the, in the library. But something really bad happened to my mail. My mail was hacked. So someone uh, moved, moved my, my mails of the meetings of the bank, of the PayPal, of Amazon to the trash automatically. So they, they made some froze in my accounts. Mm -hmm. luckily, luckily, the banks uh, agreed to return all the money, so everything is solved, but it was a real problem. And I never saw the, the last meeting announcement, so I thought that there won't be one. So I went through two weeks, two weeks ago and changed all my passwords yeah. because... You know, LastPass got got uh, their database was lifted, mm -hmm. and I figured it was time to change all the passwords and put two factor and text uh, text if they offer the text so that I know if somebody yeah. else is trying to get into the account or whatever. So when you go into my Google uh, store and bought phones and changed my address to another address in Columbus. Ooh. So a couple of phones was delivery to the, the address in Columbus. And any announcement from PayPal of my bank was erased from my mail, you know? Wow. But I was lucky because my, my wife has a a backup account, a backup, a backup mail, and the bank also sent messages to her. So we, we figured out what's going on. And now it's so, but it's a real problem. Yeah. You must take care of your password and your stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went through and I got rid of accounts that I didn't use anymore and changed passwords and you know, it's it took it took almost two weeks to do it though, because a lot of accounts, a lot of stuff. But now I feel better. I don't yeah. know. If, I don't know if I am better, but I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will use my Twitter account to show uh, what I was doing. Last, give me a second. Okay. Uh, here, okay. I will share the the screen. Uh, I lost the. Okay, share the screen. Here. This is the the HC twelve. This a, a serial uh, transparent. Uh, link for serial uh, connections. 
So I made yesterday. I, I made two of them. This is a USB to TTL adapter here. You can see my arrow in the screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. So this is the the screen, the a terminal in my laptop, and I I sending uh, one one of the of the modules was connected to my uh, work work workstation, and the other one was connected to my laptop. Okay, so I I am connecting two terminals. Uh, windows uh, running at uh, 150 uh, 200 bouts uh, between the, the computers using these two modules. The idea is to have one of the module connected to one computer that had the MicroPython IDE and the other the other board connected to the robot. So I can change the, the program on the fly, you know, you can make change and the robot may be moving or you can stop or run the, mo the robot without touching it. That's, that's my idea. Okay, another, another, I made a video, I think of this. This is the McQueen robot. Okay, with MicroPython. Okay. And this is the cute, cute boat, boat with a, an Arduino code. Practically, it's C. I'm changing the, the menu, the, the speed and all the stuff, right. Okay, that's it. And that's what I was doing. So I was working. <laughs> I, I made my, my homework. You you made more progress <laughs> with your robots than I made with my robot. No, actually it is. It's the There's same the, program. It's the same program, but in, in Python. Yeah. My problem was to figure out how to, to control the McQueen robot because is I to see commands that move move the motors and sense the infrared sensors and all the stuff. But finally, everything was working. Doesn't doesn't that IDE remind you of like the old wire wiring IDE? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks an awful lot like the old wiring ID or uh, what is that uh, processing? I, I saw I saw, I saw the I saw the <coughs> the gene uh, mail about the ID for MicroPython. I just check for a moment, but I need to go back and and try to to use it. It's interesting. The, the, my problem now is that in, in my desktop, I have Windows 7 and Arduino. Uh, I think the new, the new version of Arduino don't support uh, Windows 7. So window, Windows 7 is falling apart. <laughs> uh, well, it's been abandoned, so. I mean... Google, Google Drive stopped working the, this week also in the Windows 7. Really? So I, I am using now my, my laptop and I updated the, the operating system to Windows 11. It was very easy to do, you know? You know? Can you see the, 
This is the yeah. map. Yep. This this new computer that I got, it had it came with Windows 11, and I gave it all of about 10 there minutes worth a, of looking, and I put immediately put Linux on it. <laughs> yeah. That was Linux Mint or something yeah. else. Yeah, Mint. It actually it actually took a while to get rid of uh windows was, uh, 11 mama. they encrypt the drive from from the start you had to decrypt the drive you had to yeah. do all kinds of crap to it my my older son that is a data scientist was on december from england and he was using this laptop the one i am using now and he spent five minutes to convert the, the laptop in windows machine in a in a uh, Linux. He works with Linux, and he was working in Linux in five minutes with it. I don't know what what he did, but it's some some feature of the of the Windows environment or something yeah. that you can change to Linux. So you're not just putting another partition on the drive. You're actually. I have no idea. I have no, <laughs> no. I have idea. He did. <laughs> He was using this laptop all December. I, I, I came back using it. I see nothing change. I, I see no new icons or whatever. But he was using it in with, with Linux. So don't ask me. He, he I don't know. He probably was he using the Linux subsystem, the Windows, yeah. Windows Linux subsystem or whatever, whatever they want to call that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So next week we, we need to check the the MicroPython Arduino environment. Yep. So there's the old the old he, wiring. He's a, a, another, another member of the of the club. Oh hi. Hey. Hey, how about water. some peanuts? Yes. <laughs> he's, he knows that when I am in a meeting, he, he wants peanuts. I don't know. And the processing IDE. And it won't let me do. Yep, it looks like it looks like they just. I put a link to to the uh, micro yeah, Python see, I, thing. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not surprised because a lot of their like the. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, uh, or yeah, the Raspberry Pi, yes. the RP twenty forty. Yeah, yeah. That's like it a native works. Python thing. Yeah, yeah, it works very, very nice with MicroPython. Very, yeah, very nice. So I'm not, I'm not at all surprised that Arduino is moving towards Python. You know what? What, what I, I really, what I really like is the, the speed. You know, you change anything in your program, and press wrong. And you see what is going, what how how happened, uh, how it performs. So it's yeah. interesting. I don't I don't know. I I still don't really like Python. <laughs> I just no, don't. Really? Yeah, I just don't like it. But that is the no, direction I, everything's I, I, moving I, towards. Everything's moving towards Python. No, I, I I rather want a C plus plus in in the Arduino IDE, but it's nice to have the MicroPython also because there are very interesting libraries that there are only for Python that will well, be the, useful. The the uh, Open MV and uh, the Open Camera. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. Open CV. Yeah, so everything is, is those those things work great. Python works great for those, but I still don't like it. Yeah. You're getting set in your ways in your old age there. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you kids, get off my lawn. <laughs> and I don't even have a lawn, but you, you can't get on my lawn. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I get. I don't know. I, I get frustrated with Python because it gets very picky about spacing. And if you yeah. use spaces or tabs or. Yeah, you use, yeah. The, use the, the, the tabs are part of the language, you know, the, you, you mix some tab or something. Yeah. Everything goes out. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? I don't know if any of you remember Fortran back in yeah. the seventies. That that's was my first uh, programming language, Fortran. Yeah. In the, Fortran. In the, in the college, with, yeah. with 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 cards, you know, using uh, punch cards. Punch cards. You make oh, your yeah. program and you carry your your stack of cards. You you uh, you need to leave your cards in a window. And the next day you go for the output of your program. Yeah, if you got a really thin output, you know something went wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They send you a, a bunch of uh, printed paper with the output of your program. Sometimes you make loops and you spend a lot of paper. So they blame you. What are you doing? <laughs> well, the, the real nightmare is to drop your tray of cards okay oh try to reorder them get them back in order yeah no you, you usually you 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 made a diagonal line with your with a market you know yeah. and you need to re, re, recreate your line the diagonal line just yep. moving your cards again yeah. okay. After I, a while, I, am, I am so happy i i missed all that <laughs> Uh, you didn't miss a lot, but I can tell you, uh, those were the days, iron men and wooden computers. <laughs> <laughs> one of my, uh, one of my friends, he had a Vic 20 and they had somehow or another acquired an old teletype machine that had a punch reader on it. Yeah. And they had interfaced that punch reader, that, that old teletype machine to the VIC-20, and he sat there and fed punch tape through it to program it. And I was like, that's nuts. I mean, just, mm -hmm. just nuts. But it, it would do the opposite, too. It would, uh, he could uh, punch the tape so that it... Yeah. And you can output a uh, punch tape. Yeah. Yeah, so he could uh, he could uh, save his programs to to tape. Okay, yeah, I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of cool, but useless, but kind of cool. <laughs> Someplace in my garage here in California, I have a tray, a full tray of uh, punch, uh, punch cards. Okay, <laughs> and. Uh, Bring, bring some next time, <laughs> Ohio. Uh, nah. Hi, Kenny. Hey. hey, Kenny. How you doing? Good. I was wondering who Ken was. <clears throat> Man. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've been a stranger. Yeah, Florida, St. Paul, Minnesota, Washington, D.C., Baltimore. Yeah. Few places. <laughs> Been traveling around, you, huh? You are, you are on a rally for, for the government? For yes, that's my new job. <laughs> <laughs> I fly Southwest. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. Well, I went back to the gym last week and uh, I put my phone down on the uh, leg wrist and uh, I did a leg rest and I heard this crunch. Ooh, and ooh, then I heard did another leg crunch and I heard another crunch. I looked down at the phone, gone. <laughs> oh, my God. Two crunches. Huh? 
Yes. You have insurance on the phone? No. Hmm. No insurance. But it's a. Uh, it was bought on eBay uh, secondhand. So, uh, and it was just a Moto G power. So it wasn't too expensive. So that was Friday about 10 o'clock. And about Friday night, about 10 o'clock, I had bought another one at Target. And then uh, Saturday, I took the SIM card, put the SIM card over. And Sunday, I spent the time getting all the uh, apps to work. So, yeah. So the it's, SIM card didn't get crunched in your crunches then? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, That's cool. Yeah. But I took it to like three repair shops. Best Buy, a little local thing, and one out there by Jim. The one out by Jim said he could fix it for $150, but he didn't quite guarantee me it would work when we get done, when he got done. <laughs> so I said, hmm, no guarantee or $150. I'll go to Target. So we went to yeah. Target and got it. But I got all the apps working, so everything on the phone works, which is nice. That was Sunday. So uh, I could uh, go to the bank, uh, I could go uh, to Yahoo and financials, you know. Oh, cool. So everywhere I wanted to go, it, it went. So the thermostat that controls the house, uh, the Google here in the, in the house, and you know, all the you know, ring cameras I got going. And so, yeah, it, it wow. took it. It took me a whole day, but I got them all gone. So I'm back. <laughs> and you'll never, ever put your phone there again. Yeah. Never, never go to the gym again. Never well, go to the gym again. <laughs> you see, yeah. all the other gyms I've had, you get this little, you know, little, little card you put on your key ring and you swipe when you go through. Well, this is the gym. This gym is El Sporta, which took over from uh, uh, LA Fitness. But they don't have those little key things. So I'm kind of stuck. You know, people are stuck. You know, you put a little app on the phone, you check in that way. But the lesson to the, to the thing is don't put it on the machine. You know? Put it on the floor. Do something, but don't, don't get it around you when you're doing those those exercises you are really close to lifetime right pardon Life, lifetime is very close to your house oh lifetime is very close i walked down there from yeah, the house okay. yeah lifetime is extremely close I, fact, I was i was using this lifetime for years but i never went there okay i just pay i just pay for for the gym but i, I never never use it uh, I, I it, think ninety-nine percent of people do that, you know, pay, but yeah, never, never use it. See, I, I went, I belonged to a fitness nineteen, and they were cheap. And the idea was, I asked why the why it's so cheap. He says, we keep it so that it's cheap, so people who sign up don't come, but they yeah. don't feel so bad because they <laughs> didn't come. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. I said, hey, exactly. somebody's thinking about this. That, that, that's oh, the yeah. yeah, yeah, and, so, yeah. You feel yeah, like you, you are doing something, but you are doing nothing. You're doing nothing. Oh, I got a membership, you know? Yeah, exactly. I feel I feel better. Yeah, I feel better. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't I don't do any weightlifting. I just do uh walking and, and little crunches. So you know okay. now I know right. yeah, it's, it's, and now I have a little history. Stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> or at least don't put your phone there. Exactly. So yeah. So that was the affair Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Don't they have lockers you can put your phones in? Yeah, they have lockers, and I've got a lock, and I got a gym bag. Okay, but I'm kind of, you know, I just go in there and want to. I call it the house of pain. You're going in there, it's going to hurt. Okay, so you want to spend the least amount of time and get the most value you can. Exactly. And, and, and you want, you want in, to be connected. And, and going into the locker room and wasting all that time, nah. But I think I'm going to do something different, you know? 
<laughs> and the other thing is too, you don't want to show people your phone. You know, I didn't real. I do realize how how close I am to that phone. It does everything. It does everything. So yeah, takes pictures, puts it up. The thing is, it was all attached to the cloud, so everything went up. But the S, uh, but the uh, SD card I had got fully functional, so all the texts went up. Okay. But the pictures on the text did not. Of course. And there's no way I could recover them. They're gone. So the lesson learned is if you get a text that has a photo on it, you want it, save it to your drive on the cloud, okay? And then you'll have it. If you don't want, you don't care, just let it go. But all the text, everything came, you know, the, all the files, all the, uh, all the telephone numbers, all the contacts, everything went up. So it, that was pretty easy to get. So you can't set it up so that you can have the any photos sent immediately to the cloud? Uh, you, the photos are sent uh, or the photos are uploaded to the cloud as you take them now, as I take them now. What's not set up, and I'm not sure, because I, re, I uh, redid it, okay, is the SMS card um, app. I think the photos go up. I think, but I don't know. I do. I do know the texts go up. They, and when the, I could get the photos, to this should, phone, the photos should only go up if you save them. You've got to save them to your device first, and yeah. then your and then your device will say, "There's a new uh, a new folder has been found. Do you want to back it up?" And you say, "Yes." So. But. Is that on a text, Leroy? No, that's on, that's for, yes, for the SMS pictures. If you get a picture, you've got to save the picture. Otherwise, it won't save the, you'll get the text part, but you won't get the picture part. Right. The pictures I never got. The pictures yeah. are gone. Yeah. Pictures are gone. It, so they're, they're on the phone, but I can't get to them. That's basically it. Yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, you, they're gone since you didn't save them to the phone first. Right. Then, yeah. Yeah, they're gone. They're gone. But the te but the texts are there. So I said, okay, the texts are there. So I can I can live with that. Yeah. The photos, well, if the, here's a lesson: if you want them, save them right there. If you don't want them, don't worry about it. Just let it go. The uh, the stock yeah. uh, the stock SMFs app is okay you might you might look at a better one you know a replacement if you really want to save those pictures without thinking about it so what what app is there uh if you go to like google play and type in sms you'll see a bunch of them okay. some of them are free some of them are you pay for I think all of, almost all of them give you some sort of trial to try it first. So, but the but, SMS is free, so you know. Yeah the the app, the stock app that comes on your phone, is it's okay. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do, but there are better ones. Okay. Um, you just got to figure out what you want, and if you want just the basic. Or if you want some more advanced stuff or whatever, <clears throat> the uh, the replacement apps don't really replace. I mean the the SMS app that's on there, the 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 stock one is still there, and you can still use it. So, you know, it, it doesn't really replace it, but it kind of adds to it. Yeah, it it was when I booted up the, uh, the phone, the app was there, yeah. but I had to activate the app, yeah. and I had to tell the app, I want the photos to be downloaded to the drive, and they right. told me what what part of the drive to put them into. Okay. Yep. And that yeah, the, there's, uh, there, there's the backup had to go to the drive first. But there are there are some uh, some replacement or some some SMS apps or. Uh, 
you know, replacement apps where once you set it up, it'll just start saving the, the pictures and stuff for you. Well, this has an automatic backup. You can say for a day yeah, right. or a week or for, I guess, a month, I guess they give you an options. But, uh, but I said every week on Sunday morning at midnight, back it up. Yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah, if you go to Google play and just type in SMS or, or whatever that is, MM, MMS. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll find other replacement yeah. apps that may or may okay. not be better may or may not be better <laughs> <laughs> well this one worked all right yeah well if it works you yeah. may not want to mess with it i mean yeah you, you but, understand you know, like said, how it works the, what i'm saying is it works to the tune that if i had maybe had updated it it may have taken the photos but i didn't so the yeah. bear bear thing it did do it did save all the text but no photos yeah um, <laughs> lesson learned so is it only upload to the cloud for a short period of time and then erases them or what no it puts them on the cloud and it puts them in your drive folder and it is there but on the other hand you're allowed 15 gigabytes free on Google Cloud. So you pay them $20 a, a, a year and you get 100 gigabytes. Well, I'm at 50 now. So <laughs> at 50 now, huh? 50. So, but, but the deal is it's like 20 bucks, it's like $1.50 a month. Okay. To save everything you have well worth it it's like the mint you know carrier it's like 15 dollars, 16 dollars a month you pay it once a year you get the discount you look at it you forget about it you're done for the year yeah i need to i need to switch mine mine's currently is being billed a dollar 99 a month as soon as my free trial ends so I need to switch over to the twenty bucks. I'm at I've I've got twenty five gigs worth of pictures, just pictures. That's it. Yeah. Huh. They add up, but the idea is mint mint's mint's going to be around. You hear anything from a republic? How they're doing? Uh, no. Okay. No, I. I don't know nothing about no republic no more. Mm. I their website's still up, so I guess they're still kicking. I don't hear anybody ever talk about them anymore, though. I mean, you used to hear people talk about them, so yeah. yeah. No. Anything new, Mike? Oh, no, no. Just ordered some batteries the other day. Some um, lithium iron. They had a robot, robo mower, took a dive. So it's like I'm going to rebuild the, the uh, battery pack. I needed about 18 of them. So some charming guy in China is going to ship them to me. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, after New Year's, he'll get around to shipping it to me. Yeah. yeah. If he remembers. Oh, well, uh, they, they, they will, but it might take them a year to do it. <laughs> so these are lithium iron? Yeah. That's what it uses. And I'm kind of leery of switching it over because the plug besides the um two-prong power plug there's about a eight or ten plug that goes into it too that goes up to the controller so I thought, man if i switch something out on there it's like well, uh, not like it 
But yeah, they were, uh, yeah, lithium iron. How expensive are those? Uh, two bucks a piece. So not too bad. They said they use them a lot in uh, solar power because it'll last like 10 years on a solar si uh, solar charging system. But in the lawnmower, they say they last two to four years because of a little, I guess a little higher charge discharge rate must, must wear them down. Yeah, Wikipedia says they use them power tools, electric vehicles, solar energy installations, and large grid scale energy storage. Oh, okay. Electric vehicles? What kind of electric vehicles? I, I, it's not elaborating <laughs> on anything. It just says electric vehicles. School, scooters. Yeah, that would be my guess. Maybe, maybe like those power toys. Or electric uh, wheelchairs. Maybe. It it's, doesn't really elaborate here. I'll, I'll put a link. Yeah, I don't know if they might be a little safer than the, uh, the light standard and light. A little more stable, I don't know. Well, it's the flammability of the lithium ions or a problem. Yeah. Of course, you still got the lithium there, which is the flammable component. Ah, true, true. So it's good to see Kenny. <laughs> All good. Kenny, Kenny's a globetrotter. He, he's been all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I went to uh, Washington, D.C., and I decided I wanted to go up on the, uh, the, the monument. And uh, I bought tickets 30 days in advance, and we got there. And uh, it was pretty cool. They have an elevator that takes you all the way up. Yep. And they have an observation area. I've been there years ago when you had to climb the steps. Okay, that's way mm -hmm. back when. And now they have a nice elevator. So it's kind of nifty. Yeah. And then uh, went down and saw uh, Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Took a picture of that. So yeah, it's all good. Mm. Yeah. And then How's your foot? Thinking of uh, walking and doing stairs. Um, the foot, the left foot is healing. The right foot is acting up now. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the gym, you know. So I, I heard it last Friday. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm gonna let a week go by before I go back there again. But uh, yeah. I need to lose a little weight. I need to get back to the gym. And uh, hopefully this spring I can get on the bike. Hopefully. That's not the, it's the uh, power bike. So the Yamaha. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be able to shift. Yeah. But I did run into my grass cutter at uh, Bobby Evans the other day. And uh, I told him, I said, I shoveled snow. He says, don't do that. I'll shovel it for you. I said, Got a deal. I'll give you a call. <laughs> oh, yeah, foot's doing better, much better. Ah, good. Good to hear. Yeah. And, and Ray's said, here now. Okay. Smart. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, Jim, maybe we should do virtual more often. Uh, look at all the people that show up. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> look at people did show up i'm just saying maybe <laughs> not a good thing you know <laughs> you got anything new ray no it's time it's time for ray to to show up <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no, i had an interview a new employee today uh, they came in after their other job and um i just doing some repairs and stuff. I, I just came back from Wisconsin and had a rebuild project up there. So. 
So yeah. you're actually in your home time zone. I, I really am in my office. Yes, this behind me is real. <laughs> I know it's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's there's no distortion going on back there. I, I think he's really here. <laughs> I, I know I had that photo I put up there before. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what, what to say. I mean, things are pretty normal in the life here. Um, I did hear a rumor today. Um, is there an extreme shortage on raspberry pies out there? Yes. Still? Yes. Yes. Do you need? They're producing four hundred thousand a month, and they can't keep up. Okay, I want to start the auction for this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a seven-inch touchscreen, and then we've got a casing for it. And oh, that one's broke. Okay. See, we know where all the raspberry pies are. Ray's hoarding them. Yeah. <laughs> I should talk. I've I've probably got seven or eight that I'm not using right now. Oh, this guy was saying today that they're auctioning them off for like two hundred dollars each. Yep. As, yep. as high as two hundred dollars. Like, wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ras raspberry pies are in high demand right now, and people are looking to alternatives if they just want computing power like like the thin clients are great for that but if they want the gpio you've got to look you know you you're going to pay for a raspberry pi or an alternative like an orange pi or a you know something have like you guys that. seen those uh the server i mean you can get 20 of those stacked right next to each other and there's a um, a rack mount module that they go into those are amazing. I mean, like, what? How? <laughs> How do you cool those things? Parallel processing. Yeah, they, they are pretty darn cool. Bitcoin mining. I, I don't know if they're Bitcoin mining. I, I think they're actually doing them for um, <clears throat> individual servers. And they're setting up, you know, website server farms. Yeah, you know we need to have a extreme shortage on gun ammo because I need to sell off all my gun gun ammo, and uh, I need to buy new next year. You you should still be able to get pretty good prices for for ammo. Why do you want to sell it off? Does it is it old? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, two two three ammo and nine millimeter ammo. I got like seven thousand rounds, and um, I bought it probably 10 years ago and it's all still good i go shooting from time to time um i have not had even one round that was a, a dud um but you know it starts to tarnish you're looking at the i could run it all through a tumbler and you know clean it all up again but uh i think it'd be more fun to go shoot it or uh you know sell it somebody else just wants to go you know plinko shooting for the weekend um, so you run this through a tumbler. Yes, and I know it sounds weird, but you can put <laughs> live ammunition through so, a vibratory tumbler and just clean it all up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I've had people like, "What? Are you crazy? Put live ammo through a tumbler?" Uh, yeah, it, it's not a. Well, why, it doesn't actually you, like roll it through why, why a barrel. You put it in the, in the, tumbler? Um, the tumbler, it's a vibratory tumbler. No, I know, but what you put with a wood, wooden uh, uh, pieces or what, what you used to, to, um, to It's like oversized garnet. You know, it's um, uh, I don't know how big it is. It, it's I don't know, twenty times the size of sand. You know, it's, a, okay, okay. it's a pretty big piece, big chunks. Um, if you were to take off like a pencil eraser, mm -hmm. you break that off, okay, okay. shape it into a, a real diamond shape. Okay. Um, the pencil eraser is actually too soft. They'll use okay. steel or you know, in some cases, 
other cases they do, you know, it depends on what you're putting into the vibratory um, tumbler. Um, I've seen ball bearings go in. I've seen aggressive uh, will, you know, will steel the jeeps, media. Will chips work? Will, will the chips? I mean, I don't know if wood chips would work. I, I've never tried it, but uh, um, it depends on what material you're doing. So if you're trying to to burnish or to to ball burnish to um, brass, aluminum, right? brass. Um, you know, so sometimes, depending on what you're doing. Um, you can put like a soap and water in with it and it'll help it change the, the texture effect to your target material. But if you're doing live ammo, you don't want to put any wa uh, water in at all. You can add, it, it's a powdered soap that you know, will end up getting wiped off later, um, but it's not a wet soap. And it's just meant to keep it from um, accumulating stuff off to one side because of the mass differences. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, a couple weeks ago, I went to uh, one of my customers in Pennsylvania, and the, the customer is Master Ammo, and they make tens of thousands of rounds of ammo every day, and they have automated machinery that's putting and in they, primers and. They they use the the lasers to put the name of the victims in the in the, in the bullet, or no. <laughs> the, um, what with the laser he's got a, a galvo fiber laser and okay. um he does marking of serial numbers and the owner thing. names and logos on um manufactured guns so like if somebody makes a gun himself from a, a kit they have to have a logo on it and a serial number he also makes um suppressors silencers so he has to put a serial number on yeah. the silencer um uh, so he uses the, the galvo fiber to do that yeah. Um, they do some artwork on some of the other, uh, um, P mag magazines, the ammo magazines, and they'll laser engrave into those. Um, yeah, a lot of neat stuff. Um, they have a lot of officers come by and they'll put the officer's badge number and a, a, a little picture of the badge onto their handcuffs. Um, so the guy that owns master ammo. He used to be a sheriff, and uh, so he still has a lot of police um, ties, you know, people he knows. Yeah, contacts. A lot of contacts, yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff going on there, and I I didn't call, you know, bullcrap on his, uh, you know, tumbling live ammunition in the tumbler. But uh, I was like, show me this. <laughs> so he shows me a tumbler that's out there and it's actually running. But they, they actually buy um, used brass from target um, uh, fields and you know, indoor uh, target shooting places. And they buy used brass, like nine millimeter or 45. They buy it by the barrels. You know, they'll buy 10 barrels of brass and they bring it in, they run it through a tumbler, then they run it through the machines to resize the brass to the correct shape and size to fit into the barrels correctly again. And um, then they, new primers, um, you know, obviously the, the packing the loads, the bullets. It's, it's pretty cool, very neat. Um, so while I, yeah, it's all recycling. recycling. Yeah. <clears throat> so while I was there, I took, recently I took three of my pistols and um, two of them, we stripped them down to the every last piece and uh, figured out why they were not firing correctly. Um, I had a Ruger pistol that I was starting to blame Ruger as being a bad company because this pistol just would not fire. It was not repeatable. And, and obviously, if it doesn't fire right, you don't trust it anymore. Yeah. And um, so this pistol ended up being um some grease packed in with the firing pin so that every time the firing pin struck forward there's a space where it's supposed to float but with grease in there obviously it didn't float it did not push all the way to the front correctly so it was always landing about three thousandths of an inch short of the full depth for indenting the primer and uh we solved it so now i'm happy 
So does this guy make any new using new brass or is it all recycled? The what? Does this guy only do recycle or does he? He does both. He does both. He does both. Yeah. So here's a new, uh, and it's a, this is a top quality ammo. It's a, basically it's a hollow point, but it has uh, some striations down the sides that helps it to flare open. So once it hits the body, um, it opens up more than just a mushroom. It, it flattens out like some kind of portobello mushroom. It's, it's crazy. Um, and it causes all the shock impact to happen inside the body rather than like what I normally had been carrying was um, a full, fully jacketed, um, you know, the full oval bullet. And that bullet that I was carrying would go right through you and possibly hit the next person, go through them. So now I don't, I don't carry that anymore. So this is a all new components manufactured bullet from his company. And here's my Ruger. And uh, yeah, there's just, there's parts in here that we had repaired and it's cool. Uh, and really, it wasn't so much repairing, but it was cleaning and oiling. And they taught me a little bit more about the pistols than I had known before. Which, which is interesting because you know a lot about it. Well, <laughs> I try to. <laughs> you know a lot about stuff, Ray. Sounds like you're uh, Armageddon ready. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a I'm a little bit Armageddon ready, yeah. <clears throat> no, if you guys, I, and I don't, I know that we're not really a gun enthusiast club, but um, if anybody ever wants to go target shooting, they want to learn more about pistols, they want to learn about AR-15s, whatever. Um, I'm definitely in for the education. Um, I'm definitely up for the safety. And, um, so, you know, just don't expect to go, uh, shooting off 200 rounds and, um, have Ray pay for it. <laughs> it can be a little expensive, but, uh, yeah, I'm definitely up for the, the education part. Um, I take my kids to go out target shooting and I make sure they understand the safety and the, the danger that can also be involved. So. Yeah, I was remembering back in school, I had to do a, um, a video presentation with just like picture board. And a part of it was we had to develop our own film and print our own pictures and explain a process. So my process was reloading shotgun shells, you know, step by step. Uh, so it was that's what how did. you reloaded it on a bench? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because cool. you know we uh, that's what we were in, that's what I was into when I was younger was shooting and then it gets be expensive so you start learning how to reload. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, different times back then because when I was 16 I got a, a pump with a scope, a 22 rifle for my birthday. So I put it in its case, sling it on my shoulder, and get on the school bus with it. And then mid-class, I get it out of my locker, and me and my buddies are in there sighting it down the hall. I put it back in the case, end of school, get back on the bus, and go home, and nobody said a word. Yeah. Yeah, Can't do that now. now. No. <laughs> have um I, I don't know how many of you guys have ever been over here to the shop but um <laughs> we're yeah um we're on the back, back side of the airport um really i think there might be a total of 10 or 12 buildings back here some pretty big buildings and you know, some small ones um but there's a lot of fields as well and some uh trees not not quite a forest but there's some trees 
and then uh, the river, um, you know, the entire airport, the, the backside of the airport, and we have coyotes. Um, mm-hmm. And my employees bring their puppies, their dogs. So our dogs are, you know, maybe eight pounds. And uh, so when we go out, we have to be careful that we we walk with our dogs and we, we don't want the dogs to become dog food. I have I have two coyotes here. Every morning they are w- walking around, but the dog used to run behind them. Just they are uh, half the size of my dog, you know? So they- The coyotes are half the size of your dog? Yeah. No, the, these coyotes are like the size of a wolf, wow. a full grown big wolf. And my dogs are like these little, they can almost <laughs> okay. be the size of a woman's purse. Okay. And you like a little bitty thing. So little, little yappy dogs. Yeah. Little yip, yip, yip dogs. They, they, they're good doorbells, door alarms. Okay. <laughs> um, do we have anybody planning any big production projects? No. Vicente, you don't have some big project planning coming on? No. Big project, yes, but no big production. <laughs> <laughs> well, big product for you, it's something that you're, you're designing. Seems like you're always designing something pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I was showing some rubble stuff. On my back, you see the the track. Yeah, yeah, the grayscale track. Yeah, yep. I was using a new robot using Micro Python with it. I, I show I show them at the beginning of the meeting. And I said I apologize for coming in late. And I, I, I am working with a transparent. Uh, Serial communications between computers or between computer and robot. This is a user. What frequency are you transmitting? Uh, 115,000. Oh, that's the baud rate. What frequency is the carrier? Uh, the, the frequency is four, 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 433. Four. Okay. I don't remember. This is the HC12, right? This model. Okay. And so um, it's under certain wattage, so you're, it's all prototype wattage communication? Sorry? Just say yes. Yes. <laughs> <It's> what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So non licensed prototype communication levels. Yeah. It's an ISM frequency, so there's no license involved. If you go over certain wattage, you still have to have a license. Supposedly, you 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 can exchange speed by distance with this device. You can have two kilometers or one hundred fifteen thousand volts, but not but you, you can change the power. So probably you, you can go up to 100 milliwatts, but legal, legally, I think it's, it's not correct to go up to 100 milliwatts. That's nice. <laughs> so is that a, that's a full transceiver? Yeah, transparent. You just plug in and that's it. Uh, I, I show the... Yeah, show show the uh, show the the Twitter picture of it. Let me let me share the. Wait, what happened? They're they're fairly inexpensive if you buy them on AliExpress too. Share the screen uh, here. This is the those are the models. I am using a a USB to serial adapter here. This one is nice because you have a 3.3 volts regulator here. So you can choose five volts or 3.3 volts. And this thing works with 3.3 volts. 
So I, I connect two computers with these models at 150,000 bouts and they work pretty nice. So what's the capacitor for? What do you mean capacity? What is the capacitor? Why do you have a capacitor on the? Uh, uh, 47 micro. This is, this is to stabilize the, the power because the, the transmitter have uh, surges in the, in the, in the okay. current. So this but is that's to, definitely not on the data line, right? No, no, it's in the power. Okay. Power in the power. In okay. the three, it's part of three, power three, regulation. Okay. Yeah. 3.3 volts to stabilize the 3.3 volts. Bypass capacitor. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is the, the um, McQueen, the McQueen robot with MicroPython using the, the analog infrared sensors. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is, this is my other project. Using the infrared uh, control to change parameters in the robot. You were showing how they did um, this little bitty transceiver radio, yeah. and it's bringing in three point three volt serial communication. That's cool. This is right, right there. My, my Twitter. So he's going from computer on the red cable to a, a serial adapter, USB mm -hmm. to serial, mm -hmm. from serial to radio transmitter. So that thing you had up there mm -hmm. is a baud radio transceiver that will do 115 baud rate, 115 K. Yeah. And that's, that's really fast communication for serial communication, cool. but it is doing to, through the radio. Uh, Vicente, what is the range for that uh, transceiver at a hundred well, milliwatts? You, you use a uh, 200, uh, I mean, 2,400 bouts. I think you can reach two kilometers. Oh, but that's that's really slow speed for two kilometers. Yeah, you 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 need to to exchange speed by distance. I don't know why, but they they specify that if you want you want distance, you need to go down because the okay. there is some redundant protocol that need to figure out which packet pass and which which one is bad. You know. Okay, so let's say we wanted to just go with two hundred meters. I don't know. Maybe you can have uh, 28k. You need you need also to use a bigger antenna. You you see the connector here? Yeah. You can use a bigger antenna, and you can change the power. That's cool. In you have eight levels of power to config to to set, so you can increase the power, increase the the antenna. Maybe you may have the two kilometers, but I don't know. Nine, nine point six thousand. I don't know. There are people uh, in in YouTube doing uh, tests about distance. You can check that. Is the HC twelve transparent transceiver? I'll put a I'll put a link in the uh, chat for you, Ray. That's got a. Uh, bunch of the specs for it and the data sheet and other stuff so i'll put a link in the in the chat as soon as vicente releases my screen back to me okay stop sure. <laughs> you, you don't have control of that i could have i could have kicked you out but you know it's, i'm nice <laughs> it's not polite okay <laughs> so vicente Thank since you're you know more about those uh, HC12s. Um, are you communicating oh, okay. hey, to hey, it the I, same baud rate that it's transmitting? Hey, I just started to using them last night. You know. Uh, okay. Okay. I just saw. So the I was looking for them, and 
I almost have everything in the basement. So I found that those models do that. So I went to my drawers and looking for them. Those are from 1916, no, 2016 from China. <laughs> yeah, and they were in a, in a drawer, so. I've, I've, got, I've got some transceivers like that in one of my boxes that have just they've been sitting there waiting for something to happen it's... I, I i have i have like five kind of transceivers in the in the, in the drawer you know yeah yeah, yeah so. i'm i'm the same way i've got a whole box full of transceivers <laughs> yeah. just waiting for stuff to happen they're just there just in case i need them but ever yeah. since i started playing with the esp 32s i really haven't messed with the 433 megahertz stuff okay. much yeah, I pretty much had abandoned the whole 433 megahertz uh, transceiver stuff. I was concerned about um, uh, basically encrypting and doing the communication issues, the radio. But uh, you, can, you, can do, you can do your own encryption in, in, in using serial communication. You can create another level of encryption. Because no, they, you are, could, they are absolutely could, uh, transparent. Well, I think the modules that I was using a while back had issues with like um, FSA frequency shift keying and, and stuff. Okay. And every once in a while, you would just pick up a wrong character. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, I didn't like that. Um, but, you know, if, if all you're doing is saying F forward, F, 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 B, B, B for backwards, right, mm -hmm. R, R, R for right, and the left, 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 left then you know getting a w every once in a while you just kick it out and you know, continue with looking for you know r's for forward and you know f for forward and reverse and right and you know back and left and stuff so in that way it was easy but i wanted to have a lot more communication going on so i could send it analog values and you know you start expecting some new number but you, know, you get a w in the mix of it it's like that that kind of upset me but um that's all good. The, the Nerf transceivers that Leroy tested, they have they actually do CRC uh, checking. And there they gave good distance too. Good distance. Yeah, they, they were okay. Yeah. 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 Got some of those and with yeah. decent antennas. Um, do you know you, you could slit, set up like a uh, like a slip server and connect I, connected to the internet i have got a laptop boxes to... of antennas from these old low frequency gps units yep i remember um, those. they I, i'll go look at those antennas see if that's something that um we could use here for you guys um see if those are uh, compatible you could set up a a, a slip server and then connect a laptop or something that doesn't have internet over over the 433 megahertz line okay. that would be that would be old school <clears throat> retro way to connect to the internet setting you up a slip and a ppp <laughs> now i just gave vicente a new idea <laughs> <laughs> well um there was a college um where they had equipped all of the college equipment uh, all the the trucks the lawn mowers all that stuff with a gps and a um, a smart module and a transmitter and i believe that the transmitter that they were using was around 430 megahertz based um, so that means I've got boxes of all these antennas, and I'd be happy to give you guys these if, if they're compatible. Because yeah. I know the GPSs are crap now. They're, <laughs> they're just old. They're, they are definitely out of date. Yep. I, re I remember they were in a black box with like two antennas on them, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You gave me a couple of those to play with the GPSs. <laughs> I think I, I gave you a Christmas box one year. It had a whole bunch of stuff in there, didn't it? Yep. <laughs> it's, 
stuff stuff. <laughs> nice way to put it. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 a lot of the stuff was very useful. It, most of the stuff was very useful. Hey, um, I, I do have a, a big achievement thing, and you guys probably think this is funny. Um, my son, at nine years old, has been operating the laser on his own uh, mm-hmm. for s- several different you know, sessions now. I think he's over there running the laser right now. Right. But he's he's importing pictures off of the internet, uh, nice ones, you know, like, uh, uh, what do they call them, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, Pikachu and uh, <laughs> stuff like that, cartoons. And he'll shrink it to the right size, puts it inside of a circle and puts a little... Uh, a keychain holder on it he laser engraves them and cuts them out and he's been giving them away to other classmates at school mm-hmm. and uh, my daughters who are 20 and 21 are kind of jealous of how good aiden has gotten at using the laser so uh it's, it's you know definitely a pride thing for me i think it's pretty cool it, nice. it's not really surprising right he is your son well, he's a good kid. You know, I'm, I'm glad he's in there. <laughs> my my other kids have had the opportunity. And uh, I'm just glad that A is like, hey, this is cool. This is fun. Your girls are really, really smart, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> Aiden, Aiden. Yeah, he's a he's a trip. Last time I saw him, he was a trip. So. <laughs> still. Yeah, still. Yeah. <laughs> well. It is going on seven o'clock, so I think it's about time to wind down. So I think we're we're in, we're definitely in person next week. Okay, great. Okay. okay, so I will <laughs> hopefully see everybody next week. Yep. Bye. Uh, Thank to see you all later. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs>